So today we're going to talk about um, makeup for ballet, ballroom dance, and Cirque du Soleil makeup. Um, so that might seem kind of like a random um, assortment of things, um, but I wanted to kind of um, expose you all just to a little bit of what makeup and hair could look like um, in the dance world. I think a lot of times, um, just like I mentioned in the opera video, um, that we just don't like think of these sides of theater, but really um, there are, there's a lot of dance happening, especially in Chicago where we are. Um, there's Cirque du Soleil is huge. There's a lot of other like circus troops that are not necessarily Cirque du Soleil, but they are kind of done in the form of Cirque du Soleil um, that are kind of going on right now. So there's just so much of this out there. And I think a lot of times we sort of have this like one track mind where it's like, we're gonna work in theater, we're gonna work on Broadway, we're gonna do those tours. And like, that's kind of all that there is. Um, but there's this whole other world um, where all of the skills that you're learning in school. So whether it's like wigs and makeup or it's your costume design, costume tech work, um, there are so many different paths that you could choose to go on or just go on for a little while, right? Like maybe one summer um, you intern for ballet and the next summer you intern for like a regular theater and then you do one for like Cirque du Soleil or whatever it is. Um, I think it's just kind of, cool to explore all the different options that you have because I think a lot of times in school um, you don't always get to go down um, kind of like the more unique um, career paths that there are but um, hopefully this will kind of give you a little bit of insight into those just in case um, you ever do get the opportunity or you've been curious about them or you don't realize until um, you start looking into all of this that you are curious about it. Um, hopefully it will kind of uh, spark your interest a little bit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start um, by talking about ballet. Um, so makeup for ballet is probably like of the two things we're going to talk about it's probably like um, the two other things we're going to talk about it's probably the most similar um, to the stage makeup that we've been studying um, so just like we talked about for opera just like we talked about for traditional theater um, stage makeup is a very very important part of ballet um, just because it's really important that um, the dancers faces are seen from a distance because a lot of times um, ballets are also taking place um, in really large stages. So for instance, right now in Chicago, um, Joffrey Ballet is just finishing up um, their performances at like the Auditorium Theater. So that theater, very large space. And then they're actually gonna be moving to the Lyric Opera stage um, fairly soon. So that's a really large space too, right? So just like we have to like make sure that um, our makeup is really strong and bold for any other um, theatrical performance in a large space, ballet is gonna be the same way. Um, there's just certain ways um, that um, parts of the face are emphasized and like certain things that we pay more attention to I guess like in ballet than we do in other aspects of theater that kind of like help you differentiate um, between ballet and the other genres of theater. Um, so for ballet I want to say that probably like the most important thing that most people focus on would be eye makeup. Um, so if you look at a lot of photos of um, a lot of either like female dancers or female characters a lot of times they have very very strong eye makeup. Um, the rest of their face might seem a little bit more subtle but their eyes are very strong. Um, they generally have kind of like a winged liner and a lot of times you actually see a lot of ballerinas with like a double winged liner where they have black and white liner. Um, so that is done so that their eyes look um, just bigger, right? So the emphasis is just so that their eyes um, really open up, they really pop from stage. Um, and by placing that like white liner, right, with the black, that really helps um, to kind of like highlight it in a sense. So just like we do highlighting and contouring on our face, that white liner is kind of helping um, that black liner pop even more and therefore just kind of making the eye open up and then also by like placing like white liner um, under here that's kind of making it look like the whites of our eyes are a lot larger too. Um, they wear false lashes just like we see in traditional theater. Um, lipstick is really important in ballet um, for both like female and male dancers a lot of the times um, just because you don't want um, again on a very large um, stage in a very like grand sets a lot of times especially at, like Joffrey Ballet they'll do very grand sets for some things um, you don't want people's faces to get lost so they want to make sure that like you can see their eyes and you can see their lips um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be anything like outrageous but usually you just want to have something just like we do for traditional theater just so you don't lose anybody's face on stage um, so in that same sense they're highlighting and contouring but um, in ballet a lot of times people are also like highlighting and contouring the neck um, and like the shoulders a little bit more than we would probably see in traditional theater just because it kind of helps um, elongate the neck and it also just kind of helps when they are doing all their dances um, put kind of emphasis on like the line of the body a little bit more and just the way that um, the body looks it kind of helps um, I guess in a sense like highlight that if that makes sense um, so that's something we see um, in ballet makeup that I don't think you necessarily see in theater a lot um, and then just kind of like 
we talked about with um, opera and like with other forms of theatrical makeup, a lot of times like the colors that are chosen for ballet, um, they have to do with um, either like the style of ballet that you're doing or um, like the character that you're playing. So usually if you're playing kind of like a, like more of like a silly or like wacky character or something, like maybe you have like a little bit more like outrageous color to you, it's like a little bit more playful. Um, but if you're doing more of like a classical ballet, then that's when you might have um, like more of like the pinky or like the peachy tones or things that we think of. Um, I think most of us think of when we think of like a classic ballerina. Um, so just like certain colors, I feel like we kind of like associate with like certain characters um, in plays and on Broadway. The same thing is kind of true for ballet is that they um, kind of mark certain characters with certain colors and uh, makeup characteristics, if that makes sense. Um, having strong eyebrows is really important because again that kind of goes along with um, the strong eye makeup so that is something and again you're gonna see um, makeup in ballet is generally gonna be on men and women just like we see in like traditional theater a lot of times um, the women or the female characters there's gonna be a lot more emphasis on their makeup um, but it's probably pretty common for most like male ballet, ballet dancers or like male characters in ballet um, to also be wearing a little bit of makeup because again just when you're on such a large stage you really don't um, want to lose anybody's face um, once they're on under all the lights and in costumes and things like that. Um, and then another huge thing for ballet would be um, the traditional ballet bun that we kind of see everybody in. Um, so one of the main reasons that ballerinas wear that is actually for safety. Um, so because their hair is so like slicked back and it's like kind of centered in their head, um, it kind of, one, it helps them sort of like stay centered. It kind of gives like a balance point almost um, with their bodies but then it also keeps their hair from um, hitting them in the face when they're turning and so like that might seem kind of like oh like that's not that big of a deal but if you think of like how quickly um, they are turning sometimes and just how much they are moving um, if their hair were to like hit them in the eye or hit like their dance partner in the eye it really could seriously injure someone um, so that is why you really only see um, these very like tight buns or like tight hairstyles um, in a lot of um, ballerinas so I think like yes like it's just sort of become like the standard and the tradition um, and it's just kind of nice to see everybody um, sort of like aesthetically um, kind of looking the same and like being uniform but really like when it comes down to it, it is really like a safety issue um, and you'll see that in like a lot of dance too is that like the hair really needs to be out of the face um, just to keep people safe um, so if somebody does have like shorter hair, cause obviously there's not everyone's going to have long enough hair to put into a bun. Um, they will sometimes use like three quarter wigs or like falls or even like full wigs to kind of like help them simulate like that ballet bun. So even if you don't have super long hair, sometimes you are still made to look like you do. Um, and then for men, they pretty much just have to have their hair sort of like slicked back and out of their face. Um, and again, if they have longer hair, it just needs to be styled in a way where it's not going to be, um, in their eyes, in their partner's eyes, because um, above all else, uh, their safety is obviously going to be very, very important because a lot of times um, in ballet and in any kind of dance versus like um, regular theater, a lot of the movements that they're doing, um, there can be like a little bit more like danger involved than somebody that might just be like having a conversation on stage. Um, so there's a lot of things that you really have to take um, into consideration when you're doing a lot of like hair and makeup designs um, for ballet. Um, Another style of dance that I really wanted to kind of talk to you all about, which I feel like might seem kind of random, um, is makeup and hair for ballroom dance. So um, obviously there's a ton of different dance styles, right? And every single dance style is going to really have um, its own sort of like traditions and iconic looks. Um, I decided to pick ballroom dance. Um, just because I think, um, one, I think it's really fun. Like, honestly, if you just look up pictures of it, um, they really style themselves, uh, with some like really wild hairstyles, especially and some really intense makeup. Uh, so I think it's kind of like interesting to study. Um, but also too, uh, makeup and hair are so important for volume dance. So it's actually something that they get judged on. So you are expected to present like a certain appearance. And if you don't present that, you're actually going to lose points. So even if you're like an amazing dancer, um, if your appearance is not how it should be for like the type of ballroom dance that you are dancing um, and the different styles all have different kind of like key aspects of their looks that uh, you should have you will get marked down for that so um, that's why I think it is it is just so interesting because I don't think we necessarily like think of like competitive dance and like I think a lot of us think of like heavy glitter and things like that but um there are so many like rules and like intricate ways that people style their hair um so that's why i wanted to kind of like take a minute um 
and talk to you all about that. And also, too, like, if you are interested in doing um, hair and makeup or even, like, designing costumes for something like this, it's something where there's definitely a need for it. And I think there's probably always going to be a need for it. So um, it could definitely be a good way to either, like, make a little extra money or maybe it's a avenue that you want to, like, completely explore. Um, but it's just, just something else to think about. Um, so for ballroom dance, um, probably the most important thing is that the makeup is not supposed to be subtle. Um, even, like, if somebody is, like, older, um, and wearing makeup, so even, like, older women who do ballroom dance, still very intense makeup, um, but just because the makeup is intense does not necessarily mean that they're, like, coating their eyes with, like, a ton of black eyeshadow or anything, um, you still want to make sure that, um, the eyes can be seen and that it's nothing, like, too heavy, but, um, things are generally sort of, like, heavily applied in ballroom dance, um, and there's a lot of like strong contrast in their makeup. So probably like the number one thing, um, people are usually very, very tan in ballroom dance. Um, so a lot of times people go tanning even before. And the reason for that um, is just because a lot of times like the lights can wash them out. Um, so that's sort of their way to sort of like combat that. Um, and then um, another way that I feel like ballroom sort of like differs from like some of the makeup you might see in like ballet other than like the tans because I think in ballet a lot like we see a lot of people who are actually like a little bit like traditionally like paler in ballet but in ballroom dance you're like traditionally very very tan um also in ballroom dance the eye makeup that people have is usually like very extravagant I feel like and it's also like um it's very very heavy so you're going to see a lot of like glitter and a lot of like metallic colors you're going to see um colors that match dresses you're going to see colors that just kind of complement the dresses um so all in all like ballroom dance makeup um though people are wearing a lot of it it's not necessarily um super out there or anything they are still like mildly conservative um so you're not going to see people with like green and blue lipstick or like too crazy of colors um for eyeshadow but you really do see a lot of like um very intense like shimmer looks and glitter looks and metallic looks and like i said like really like any age group um younger women older women they're all wearing super heavy metallic eyeshadow um very heavy eyeliner it's usually going to be like that winged liner again to kind of help like um make the eye look a little bit larger and just to put more emphasis on it lashes are very important um lipstick is obviously very important um so for different so if you're dancing like standard ballroom dance you might be wearing like a dark red or like a plum but then if you're doing like um another style of it you might be in like a brighter color so that's why um I think it's also kind of interesting to look at this too is just because um, to someone who doesn't like know a lot about ballroom dance like I would just be like okay like is there not just like one general rule like no um, each style of it has specific ways that they are really supposed to look um, and as like a makeup artist for something like that like you really need to be like having these conversations with um, your dancer and with whoever it is that you're working with just so that you know that you're not going to like put something on them that could get them marked down with points just because it's not um, the appropriate look for what they're doing so it can get really intense um, but um, and I only have like a little tiny bit of experience um, doing makeup for ballroom dance but um, I thought it was really fun I didn't expect to like it but um, I had a lot of fun with the one client um, who I had that was a ballroom dancer um, and I don't know it's definitely something that yeah after I got to do it I was like I think this is something that I could keep doing so um, if you have a lot of fun with like doing eye makeup you might really like um, working in this world or if you really like love to style hair um, they do some wild hairstyles um, that we'll talk about in a second too so um, there's a lot of fun that can be had with this um, you see a lot of people with like body glitter uh, glitter in general um, and then not only is like they're going to be like some body glitter and things they also do like a lot of like heavy like hair glitter so they will glue rhinestones to their head um they will put like hair glitter in they will use like washable like glitter glue um like craft glue even uh in their hair just to kind of like make it sparkle and like accentuate it a little bit and almost put in like little highlights um basically anything that's going to make them like really like stand out and shine is a lot of like what you will see um in ballroom dance um, as far as like the adhesives go for things like that so um, the best way to do it would probably they probably use um, not they probably they do they use uh, like washable school glue so the same things uh, sort of essentially right that we like use to glue down like eyebrows and things um, people are actually using like Elmer's glue to glue like rhinestones to their head because um, it's really important that uh, whatever they're putting on like yes some of those things might be self-adhesive but if they're dancing for hours everything they're wearing has to be um, very very like 
strongly like adhered so like their lashes need to stay on um the rhinestones whatever like little hair moments they have need to stay on their makeup needs to not sweat off so um another really important part of ballroom dance um that I probably should have mentioned before too is that the makeup needs to be very like durable and the hair needs to be like durable so you're gonna need like a good like oil control primer and like oil control um, powders probably even they need to use like a setting spray you need to make sure that you really glue lashes on um, probably like a lip stain is gonna stay on somebody longer waterproof everything as much as humanly possible um, so that's another thing that kind of like I talked about with like the ballet makeup too that maybe we don't necessarily see in traditional theater because somebody might just be wearing their makeup for like two hours and they're talking to somebody on stage versus like they are like dancing for hours on end um it's a little bit different like the needs um for dance makeup versus makeup um for just like a traditional theatrical production um as far as like hair goes aside like the different like hair aside from like the different like hair decorations and stuff from ballroom dance um you either see these very like sleek styles which a lot of times you see um the sleeker ones um in more of like um, sort of like the Latin and like rhythm sides of like ballroom just because the focus is sort of like on um, speed in that and you don't really want like the hair to get in the way of it and you just kind of want everything to be sort of like sleek um, to emphasize somebody's like speed when they're moving around so a lot of times you see like a low bun the low bun can also be used as like kind of like the beginner ballroom dance look for like anything um, but just because they're buns doesn't mean that they're boring um, so you'll see like if you like look at some of the pictures um, that I put into like the PowerPoint and stuff for this um, they do some wild stuff even with just like basic buns like they might have a bun with like rhinestones glued to their head um, so it's definitely it's never gonna be anything that's not um, a little bit over the top uh, even people with really short hair um, a lot of times they'll like finger wave their hair or like they'll style it in a way where it's not just like regular hair sitting there um, things are generally like very heavily gelled very heavily hairsprayed um, so that they can maintain these sort of like wild shapes um, that they sort of like sculpt into their hair for like lack of better words um, and so a lot of times you'll see like when it's not um, in sort of this like sleeker style when they are doing something um, that's more along the lines of like a standard ballroom dance um, this emphasis isn't on speed quite as much so this is when you start to see a lot of like the very like elaborate and like voluminous hairstyles so sometimes they'll make their hair like a little bit taller to kind of help if there's like a height difference with their partner so that they don't look um, super short <laughs> compared to their partner um, but this is when you'll see people sculpt things that look like kind of like they'll have like flowers in their hair like little waves um, it really is wild some of the stuff that they do with ballroom um, and I can't even imagine how they do some of the things that they do so uh, it is definitely uh, if you are one who loves hairstyling um, it's definitely something to look into because you probably have a lot of fun with it um, they use really strong hairstyling gel, so a lot of the things that people are probably also using to make, like, mohawks and things like that, um, probably a lot of what they're using, so, like, that same, like, the got-to-be-glued, um, like, styling gel that a lot of people use for, like, mohawks and spiking their hair, um, is also what ballroom dancers are going to be using. Um, men's hair for ballroom, again, kind of like men's hair for ballet, is usually just going to be, like, slicked back, and it needs to be, like, out of their face, so they can wear, like, a nice, neat, like, ponytail, um, or, like, even, like, a neat bun I've seen in, like, pictures, too, um, they just need to make sure that, like, they are very like clean and neat because usually the emphasis is more like on what the woman um what the woman's appearance looks like um versus the man's appearance um so yeah so ballroom dance it is a wild time um and I don't know I just think it was it's kind of fun to learn about and again um I didn't realize how large of a scene there was for ballroom dance but in Chicago like there's quite a bit of it going on um and a lot of times people are kind of like left on their own to figure out their hair and makeup um so there is definitely, definitely like work um, in that area if it does something, uh, if it is something that interests you. Um, and then kind of like the last thing that I wanted to like work into um, this whole world of dance uh, is Cirque du Soleil. So Cirque du Soleil is more obviously like acrobatics and circus, you know, um, not necessarily dance, but I felt like it kind of fit into this world. Um, and what is so unique about Cirque du Soleil, if you don't know about it, so like, yes, it is circus, but it was um, when they started to do their work in the early 80s um, in Montreal, um, up in Canada, they were kind of like pushing the limits of like what circus was. So they weren't using any animals and um, doing kind of any of the like, I feel like traditional like circus things. Like, yes, all the acrobatics were there. Um, but they also, what Cirque du Soleil kind of like prides themselves into is that all of their shows have like a story that go with them. So they're always like deeply like reflective as well. So like, yes, it is like entertainment, there's thrills, um, you know, like there's like clowns, there's things that are funny, 
but um, there's also going to be like a deeper message behind everything that they do and that was something um, that was pretty new I feel like to a lot of people and that's what I think really like set them apart and why they're still so successful today um, is that they sort of almost like created like their own genre of circus. Um, so they first came to the U.S. in 1987, and that was so successful um, that in 1993 they actually put um, their first permanent show ever. They put it in Las Vegas, um, and that show is called Mystere, um, and they are still going today. And that is actually, um, if it is something that you are very interested in, um, if you like Cirque du Soleil, um, they do a lot of great like college internships. So I interned at um, Mystere actually. Um, when I was after it was after my sophomore year in college, um, and I did wigs and makeup and wardrobe there, and like split my time equally before um, between those, and like honestly, I learned so much um, while I was there, um, and it is really like every day is different. I feel like, but like even though like you're doing like the same shows every single day, and you do like two shows a day, five days a week, so it's a lot. Um, you still, I don't know, I was learning like new skills and like little things every single day. Um, and yeah, so if you, do you like their like first level like internships, it would be on Mystere if it's so the same way as when I was in college, but yeah, you do Mystere and then um, after that, like once you're a little bit older, then they would place you on like other shows that they have. Um, so there is an opportunity to do both internships. Um, I only did the one, but um, I do know some people, I believe that like did both and like actually like work for them now too. So um, I think it's something that like people are always like, oh yeah, like I'd never be able to do that. But like, honestly, like I didn't think I would get it. I got that internship and I know so many people who work for Cirque du Soleil. Um, there are tons of jobs. Um, obviously not right now <laughs> with how the state of the world is, right? But um, it's a cool company um, to get involved with. So if you are interested in circus, um, don't be afraid to apply for it. Um, it was like one of the best jobs I've ever had in my entire life. So um, I highly recommend it and I highly recommend um, just like the, t the people that are there that would be able to like teach you so many different things um especially for like costumes and like wardrobe and hair and makeup um there's a lot there's a lot you could do there um but enough about my life right um so just like a little bit on like Cirque du Soleil makeup um so a lot of the designs so there are other designers now but a lot of the designs are created by um this woman uh her name is it's Natalie Gagne I'm gonna murder like all of the French right because uh, I am not <laughs> not good um with the French accents anymore, but, um, she has designed, like, um, since 1995, and, like, probably it's, it's even more now, um, I think this is, like, a little out of date, um, she's done 1,000, like, separate makeup designs for them for 16 different shows, um, so she herself is from, um, like, Montreal, like, she studied makeup in Montreal, um, and then, uh, she began to work for Cirque du Soleil in 1985, and, um, what's cool about the way that she approaches makeup um, is that every makeup that she has, she says that she creates a story to go with it, because she feels like, um, when she teaches makeup, if she's just teaching people to, like, put lines and shapes and colors in certain places, it's not necessarily as effective as if, um, she has them, like, know a whole story behind it, because you have to think, like, even though, like, yes, these people are, like, acrobats, like, they're still acting, they're still performing, um, and all of the Cirque shows are telling a story, so for them to have a little bit more background for whatever character or characters they're playing, um, that always kind of helps them sort of like get in the mindset of um, who they are sort of like becoming essentially with like their hair and makeup um, and just kind of makes it easier for them to learn it. Um, and I think one thing um, that a lot of people think of when they think about doing like theatrical makeup is getting to do Cirque du Soleil, Cirque du Soleil makeup. But um, one thing that's like it's a little like sad and I didn't know this when I um, until I interned there, they actually do their own makeup. Um, so everybody is trained in like one on one sessions and I actually got to sit in um, on one of those like while they were happening, like they were putting in a new artist. So I did get to see um kind of like the process for them learning their makeup and then sometimes like they'll check back in with people if they feel like they're not doing a great job with it and they'll have little sessions for that too um so they are like really rigorously like trained on their makeup and they spend a lot of time on it um but unless it is something like very specialized um they're going to be doing it themselves part of the reason for that is there's so many people um that are in all of these shows I don't know how possible it would be to have every single person getting their makeup done um and to just kind of like with the trend of theater a lot of times it's just easier to teach um the artists to do it themselves um but while I was there I was doing tattoo covers so there were like three um artists who needed tattoo covers so I did their tattoo covers every single night um and then like in some shows I know like there's people that have things like airbrushed on them so if it's like something that's very specialized obviously they're probably not going to be able to do that themselves um so they're going to need somebody to help them with so there's still the opportunity to like 
do makeup and then um like if they have like promotional photo shoots or like they redid like their program while I was interning so like we got to help with makeup um for the program or if it's like um they do like a fundraiser every year and I have a friend who works um on cost so like she gets to do makeup for the fundraiser so there's certainly you're still going to be doing it at some point it's just not going to be like um I think in the same way that we always kind of like thought or were under the impression of um but it is still there they um usually put like a lot of them will put at least like on Miss Dare so the, the show I worked on um the two that had like uh there was one wig in the show and only like one mustache so not crazy like some of the shows have way more than that um they put it on themselves so like we were responsible for like restyling it every single time um but they would apply it themselves so um there's not necessarily a ton of you like applying like wigs and facial hair to people either um but it's still it's still a lot of fun um I really enjoyed it um my friends who work for Cirque really love it too um and just like we talked about um with like ballet and with ballroom dance the makeup being durable is very very important um and also the makeup and the hair um whatever it is the whole costume it has to be safe um so there's like a lot of safety precautions um with Cirque that I never even like would have thought about like there's somebody just one person who goes around like at Mister and like checks everybody's shoes every single day and like they have to make sure like some of them have to have like a certain kind of like um glue on their shoes and their costumes have to have that and if it's not on there um they could really get very seriously hurt when they're performing so there's a lot of things um that go into like these really like fun costumes and fun makeup and like fun hair um that I think like as like kind of like outsiders people don't realize but um your job is, like, very, very important. So even if you're not the one, like, necessarily, like, applying all of these things to them, you're responsible for making sure that everything is, like, kind of being put on in, like, a safe way. Um, and so ultimately, like, you are kind of partially responsible for um, their own safety. So you do still have a really very important job um, if you are working in, like, wigs and makeup and, like, wardrobe and stuff for Cirque. Um, and then just kind of like one quick thing with like how they do their makeup um at least like again so this is all, all my experience with it it's just from the shows that I worked on um but what I noticed that I thought was cool is so um they'll do like all of their makeup in cream first and then they set it with just like a neutral colorless powder and then they go back in and they put um the pressed colored powders back over um what they already set just to make the colors more vibrant so they have to make sure their their makeup is seen from like way up in the air and like huge stages while they're doing all these tricks um so that is one really good way to kind of like make sure that it stays on because it's really heavily set um but also so that it stays super vibrant um so that's kind of like one cool trick i feel like um i learned while i was there but yeah if you look through cirque makeup um there's a little bit of everything like there's some people who just look like regular people um but then there's people that have like these really like super elaborate makeups um even like the musicians uh they generally have some kind of like hair and makeup going on too so kind of everybody plays like a part in like the story um the overall story for Cirque du Soleil so um I really do uh encourage you like again like I never thought in a million years like I would get that internship but if it is something you're interested in um I definitely recommend exploring that and the same with um either like ballroom or like ballet or just like anything in the dance world um I just think it's something that we're not necessarily exposed to a lot in theater but um uh, there is a lot of work there it's a lot of fun um so yeah I really encourage you to explore it if you ever get the chance